Three people in this photo died of the same rare disease, glioma, also known as brain cancer. Our grandmother, our father, and his sister. When my father was diagnosed with a glioma, our first question to his doctors were, is this related to the glioblastoma that killed our grandmother? And they all said no. And we didn't believe them. When we learned that my dad's cancer was the same as his mother's, and were told by his neuro-oncologist that there was no connection, I just set out looking. It was surprisingly hard to find any information on fam familial glioma, but I kept coming across, across the same name. I kept coming across the name Dr. Melissa Bondi. I told Hadley and Carrie that their hunch was right and that brain tumors do run in families, and I've been studying this for 30 years now. Dr. Melissa Bondi is the leading researcher in the world looking for the genes that are responsible for the etiology of brain tumors. She wrote back probably within the hour, and we were on the phone with her by that afternoon, if not the next morning. It was like a cloud had lifted. It gave us hope and confirmation that we weren't crazy. We all know from research that BRCA1 and 2 runs in families, and particularly with families that have breast and ovarian cancer. And we pursued studying brain tumors for the same reason. Brain tumors do run in families, and our goal is to try to identify genes that predispose individuals with a family history to understanding what those genetic contributions could be. Your genome is a very, very long chemical chain. It consists of three billion characters. And those characters, we just call them A, C, G, and T. And when we sequence your genome, what we do is that we read out those characters so that we can actually see and understand it. Your genome consists of 20,000 genes. And what is a gene? A gene is just a recipe, right? It's a recipe that makes you, you. Now, not everybody's genome is the same, right? Everyone has little differences. Usually there's like three to four million differences in this three billion long chain of letters. Um, and those differences, most of them do nothing, right? Most of them are completely benign, don't make any changes. But they also control things like the color of your eyes, how tall you are, but they also control whether you will actually develop disease. So we have to do two things to find a new disease gene. One, we have to look at the genomes of many, many people who have the disease, and then we have to look at the genomes of many, many people who don't have the disease. And what we're looking for is little differences between the people who do have the disease and don't have the disease. And we're looking for those differences to all sort of pile up in the same gene, the same recipe. And that tells us that maybe that gene, that particular recipe, changes in it will actually lead to the disease. We've identified a gene called POT1, which occurs in about five to seven percent of the families that we've sequenced. But we know that there's other genes because that doesn't account for 100 percent of the families that we think have, could have a familial predisposition. Approximately 24,000 Americans are diagnosed each year with a primary malignant brain tumor. Of these, five to 10 percent are going to prove to be familial. The median survival of a tumor such as a glioblastoma is only 15 to 17 months. And it is tragic that only about 5% of patients will survive for five years from diagnosis. Carrie and I feel so fortunate to have found you to help solve this mystery. What gives Carrie and I hope and gives us so much purpose is knowing that this could help lots of families and that our father's story didn't and when he died in 2014, that our father's story can help further science. And everyone's story can help further science. The hardest part of finding a new gene that causes glioma is finding people who will participate in our study. And participation is extremely easy. All we have to do is collect a small number of cells from you. We can collect it from your saliva. We can collect it from your skin. And then we take those cells away, and in a few days, we can extract the DNA, and then we can sequence it. When you have a brain tumor in your family and learn that it's familial, meaning other family members have it, there are many reasons why you should join the gliagene study. Yeah, part, and any books are part one. Okay, so that's Papa, and that's me, Max. 
That's okay. me as a baby. Wow. It's terrifying to know that siblings and parents and children of people with glioma have twice the risk of developing a malignant brain tumor. But we can't live under a rock. We have kids. We have to be involved in this research for the difference it could make in their lives. We learn from science, we learn from research, and it's only by working with interested and helpful families and having them as partners with us that we're gonna be able to find answers and to be able to find cures. If you or someone you know has brain cancer, go to gliogene.org and join the gliogene study. Please help us understand how glioma is inherited.